Hello, welcome to today's lesson. In our previous tutorial, we looked at vertical motion under gravity. We explored the various aspects of such a motion, and we derived the equations needed to solve problems. We went ahead to use the equations to solve a few problems. In today's video, we are going to talk about the horizontal aspect of such motions, which is horizontal motion in air. For us to better appreciate the concept, let's consider this free body diagram. This is the simplified form of such free body diagrams. Since the motion is in air, there should be a distance between the ground and a point at which the body is projected. And this is called the height, represented by H in the diagram. Also, the body is projected with an initial velocity, U. It falls to the ground having covered a horizontal distance, S. Now let's explore some additional concepts about horizontal motion in air. When a body is projected horizontally in the air, it travels with both horizontal and vertical velocities. This means that as the body moves horizontally, it also moves vertically. It is important to note that the body has an initial horizontal velocity only, labeled UX, but it has no initial vertical velocity, which you usually label it UI. The simple reason is that we are talking about bodies projected horizontally in air. In this case, they do not have initial vertical velocities. Since gravity has no influence on horizontal motion, the initial horizontal velocity, labeled UX, remains constant. This means that the initial horizontal velocity does not change throughout the motion. For example, if the initial horizontal velocity of a body is 20 meters per second, it will remain 20 meters per second provided it is moving horizontally in air. Also, the time t taken to travel through the horizontal distance is the same as that of the time taken to travel through the vertical distance. The horizontal distance s is given by the product of the initial velocity and time. In symbols, we can write that S is equal to UX times T. The horizontal distance S is also called the range. In order to work around this type of motion, that is horizontal motion in air, we have to modify the equations for vertical motion under gravity. So let's revise a little. The equations for vertical motion under gravity are number one, v is equal to u plus gt. Number two, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2gh. And number three, h is equal to ut plus half gt squared. And so by modifying these equations, we have to remember that the initial vertical velocity for horizontal motion in air is zero. In this case, the equations would be 1. V is equal to GT. 2. V squared is equal to 2GH. And 3. H is equal to half GT squared. That is all that we need to master in order to solve problems. So having gone through these concepts, let's now solve a few problems. So let's take our first question. It reads, a tennis ball traveling with a speed of 10 meters per second rolls off a horizontal table 1.0 meters high, ignoring air resistance, determine the 1. Horizontal speed of the ball just as it strikes the floor. 2. The time of flight of the ball in air. An acceleration due to gravity gene has been given as 10 meters 
per second squared. So in this question, we have been given two tasks to perform. We are supposed to calculate or find the horizontal speed of the ball just as it strikes the floor. And then we have to find how much time it takes for the ball to fly in the air before it hits the ground. So let's look at the solution. The first part of the question has a simple solution. We know that for horizontal motion in air, the horizontal speed is constant throughout the motion. And so the horizontal speed will remain 10 meters per second from the beginning of the motion to the end of the motion. The second part of the question is asking us to find the time it takes the ball to roll off the table to the ground. So we use the third equation, which is h is equal to half gt squared. Here we know the value of h from the question. We also know the value of g from the question. So we just have to find t by making t the subject. So let's make t the subject. We are going to have t is equal to the square root of 2h over g. Now let's substitute the values. We are going to get square root of 2 multiplied by 1.0 meters divided by 10 meters per second squared. And by computing this on our calculators, the time is going to be 0.45 seconds. Now let's take our second question. It reads, in the diagram, a ball placed on top of a tower 150 meters high is kicked with a velocity of 20 meters per second to hit the ground at a distance s. Determine the value of s. Once again, j has been given as 10 meters per second squared. So the question is having a very simple demand. We are to calculate the horizontal distance s the ball travels before it hits the ground. Now, in order to calculate the horizontal distance, we have to multiply the initial velocity by the time. In the question, we have been given the initial velocity to be 20 meters per second, but we don't know the time. So our first task is to find the time. Finding the time will take the same procedure as we did in our first question. So we use the third equation, h is equal to half gt squared, and make t the subject. By making t the subject, we once again have t is equal to square root of 2h divided by g. And so by substituting in the values, we have t is equal to square root of 2 times 150 meters divided by 10 meters per second squared. By computing this on our calculators, we will have t to be equal to 5.48 seconds. Now that we have the time, let's quote the relationship to find the s, which is s is equal to u multiplied by t. Let's put in our values. We are going to have 20 meters per second multiplied by 5.48 seconds and this gives us 109.5 meters. Let's take our third and final question for this tutorial. A particle is projected horizontally at 10 meters per second from the top of a tower 20 meters high. Calculate the horizontal distance traveled by the particle when it hits the level ground. G has been given as 10 meters per second squared. And so this question also has a very simple demand. We have to calculate the horizontal distance traveled by the particle, just as we did for the second question. In order to calculate the horizontal distance, we need to multiply the initial velocity by the time. The initial velocity is given as 10 meters per second, but we do not know the time. So let's find the time from the equation h is equal to half g t squared. By making time the subject, we have t is equal to square root of 2h divided by g. Let's put in the values. t is equal to square root of 2 times 20 meters 
divided by 10 meters per second squared and the answer is 2 seconds so now let's write down our formula for finding the horizontal distance which is s is equal to u times t by putting in the values we have 10 meters per second multiplied by 2 seconds which gives us 20 meters as our final answer thank you very much for staying with us to the end of this lesson we hope you have enjoyed studying with us if that is the case then like this video subscribe to our channel and share to your friends see you in the next video